the nurse provides care for a client diagnosed with type 1 diabetes mellitus. Which assessment findings alert the nurse to a hypoglycemic reaction? And it's a select all that apply. Which I know the first thing you think is, oh, no, not a select all that apply. <laughs> it's okay. We can get this one right. Remember, you're just going to turn it into a true-false question. You can do this. So our topic is type 1 diabetes. They have, we're concerned about hypoglycemia. So we're going to ask ourselves, is this true for hypoglycemia? But first, let's talk about hypoglycemia in type 1 diabetes. What do we know about it? Well, here's our assessment data. We know the client has type 1. Now that means, pathophysiology, that the client isn't making any insulin. Their pancreas isn't working properly. So it's not like type 2 where the body isn't reacting to insulin. No, this patient is not making any insulin on their own. So where do they get it? Well, we're giving it to them, right? <laughs> or they're giving it to themselves. So this patient is going to be on regular insulin. So they're going to be regularly checking their blood glucose and regularly giving themselves insulin. How is hypoglycemia related to diabetes? Well, we know that it can occur in both types of diabetes. And especially in type 1 diabetes, hypoglycemia is because they have too much insulin and not enough blood glucose. Now, it can be very dangerous. Hypoglycemia occurs any time the blood sugar falls below about 70, and it's due to an outside increased insulin course. So too much insulin, not enough blood glucose. What symptoms can we expect to see? We would expect the patient to have tremors. We would expect them to be perspiring. Now they might have cool skin, but it's going to be clammy, perspiring. We can expect anxiety because they don't have enough reserves. They don't have enough energy reserves, so we can expect them to be anxious. We can expect them to be hungry. That's the body's reaction. Hey, there's not enough energy. We need more energy. We need to eat something, so therefore it's going to trigger the client to feel hungry. They're going to be weak because their energy is low. They're going to have tachycardia, confusion, and a headache. All right, so here's our select all that apply. Is this true regarding hypoglycemia? Is this a sign or symptom of hypoglycemia? Tremors. Yes, we just said they may have tremors. Number two, hot, dry skin. Is this true regarding hypoglycemia? No, we said the patient is going to be perspiring. They might have cool and clammy skin, not hot and dry. That hot and dry skin is a sign and symptom of hyperglycemia. We're looking for hypo. Don't fall into that NCLEX trap. Number three, nervousness. Will our patient with hypoglycemia be nervous? Yes, they're going to be anxious and nervous because their energy stores are low. Will they be irritable? Will our patient with hypoglycemia be irritable? Not necessarily. They're going to be anxious and nervous. What about muscle cramps? Will our patient with hypoglycemia have muscle cramps? Well, remember, you have to be a word detective. Muscle cramps, they're not the same thing as tremors. So no, our patient will not have muscle cramps. They'll have tremors. What about a headache? Will our patient with hypoglycemia have a headache? Yeah, absolutely. We said that they would definitely have a headache if their blood sugar is low. And that may often be one of the first symptoms that clues them in. They're hungry and they have a headache. So hypoglycemia. It can occur anytime the blood glucose is less than 70. That's what the American Diabetes Association has said hypoglycemia is. Now remember, each patient is individualized. So their tolerance level may be different. So, but it can happen anytime the blood glucose is less than 70. It happens if the blood glucose drops too quickly. And that can happen 
when insulin is peaking. An abnormally low blood glucose level, it can happen anytime, but again, usually it occurs when insulin is peaking. So do you need to know your onset, your peak, and your duration for the different types of insulin? Yeah, it's really important. It's not just important for the NCLEX, it's gonna be important for taking care of your patients and keeping them safe. You need to know what the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia are. You need to know that hypoglycemia, it triggers an internal emergency. So the body is saying, wait, time out, something's wrong, this is an emergency. It stimulates an autonomic response because the body is trying to get back to homeostasis. So knowing the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, it's essential for providing safe and effective care and quality teaching to clients with type 1 diabetes. Now it's essential for providing care for any client with diabetes, but especially with type 1. And you're going to need to know this, whether it's on the NCLEX or whether it's in your practice as a nurse, or even you could be a bystander helping somebody out in the public.